Welcome guys to the Next Level Call. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm really excited to have the guests that we have on today. Two amazing people, we have amazing people every week. Two of my favorite trainers. Um, Dave Anderson, if, you, if you're not familiar with Dave Anderson, if you're not familiar with the books he's written, the amount of books that he's written, how successful he's been, how phenomenal he is as a trainer, um, he was one of the people that when we looked at starting the company, we thought, you know what, when we do these major events, we're gonna have to bring somebody in and do some training. And Dave was just somebody that came to mind right away for a few reasons. Number one, he's 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 a worker, he's a salesperson at heart. He He's a guy that's been out there like you all have been and, and you're aspiring to be. So it's real hard for me to be motivated by somebody who says, here's how you go sell. And I go, have you ever sold anything? And they don't. They've never have. And in our deal, life insurance becomes like, we always kind of joke and say, this is the simplest sale ever because it's almost like you're just filling people's orders because they already know that they want they want what you provide. So, But Dave is really excited about the annual convention. We're really excited about having him at annual convention. Um, we have Mark Mead's gonna, gonna do a phenomenal training for us today. But Dave and I were talking the other day and I said, would you mind just kind of jumping on our next level call and, and providing some, some words of wisdom for people. If you, again, if you've not researched his book, if you don't make waves, you'll drown, change my business life. It, it the whole, from, from front to back, it did, it changed because I think my entire previous um, independent contractor career, I made so many mistakes that book helped me fix. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my buddy Dave Anderson on. He's gonna say a few words to all of you all for a few minutes, I'm gonna bring Mark on. But I really appreciate you, Dave. I appreciate all you do for us and I hope you guys get a lot out of it. Hi, Dave Anderson here, and greetings to everyone in the Family First Life family. I'm sitting here in our Agora Hills, California offices, and the year is winding down. I'm reviewing my calendar, and uh, I see you all on the radar for Las Vegas uh, early next year, and I get really, really excited about speaking with you and spending time with you. It's always such a high-energy group and fun for me to be around. Not every group is the same, obviously, but you all bring something special uh, dynamic wise when you get together at a conference and I'm, I'm excited to be there with you in Vegas and after visiting with Sean uh, I'm understanding that you're you're just crushing it this year you're having an outstanding year and it's a good time as this year starts to wind down and we start to get ready to go into what's next I thought maybe to plant a few seeds with you uh, get you thinking about some things uh, prior to my visit with you and and if you're on track yeah, it'll just help keep you on track and if you're off track or getting off track maybe something I say I can get you that nudge in the right direction and so you know I, I understand that the vision you have for your organization is is really bold I mean you start looking at at uh, reaching a billion dollars uh, in the near future and in order to do that you know being able to protect families and at the same time take care of your own I mean it's wonderful how that works together but I just let's back up a little bit and whenever you start talking about vision vision for your organization your personal vision whatever your goals are for yourself what you want to become what you want to contribute what you want to get vision we tend to think of it as a destination thing but really vision is a daily thing it's a daily thing and to get there we have to have a more relentless daily focus on doing the those handful of right things that we know are going to move us in the right direction sometimes we get really focused on the outcome and we take our eyes off the essential activities and I call it confusing the scoreboard for the game we're watching the scoreboard but we take our eyes off the game and let me tell you when it's really easy to do that precisely at a time like this when you've had such a great year and some of you are doing so very well, we have to remember that that is when complacency can start to take hold. And, and we have to understand the definition of complacent because if, you don't, if you're not aware of it, uh, you're going to probably be falling prey to it. Our biggest vulnerability is the one we're not aware of. And here, here's what it doesn't mean. Complacent doesn't mean that you're lazy. If you look it up in the dictionary, that's not what it says. And I believe a lot of people fool themselves into thinking they're not complacent just because they're putting in a lot of hours. But what it's more about, if you look at the definition, it says calmly content, smugly self-satisfied. So think about that. You, you can put in a lot of hours and a lot of days, but still be so calmly content with how you're doing. You're not doing it with as much intensity, with as much excellence, with as much consistency. And, and so complacency, lest we be fooled, it's not about the number of hours or days you're putting in. It's about what you're putting in 
those hours and days. And that's why I started this off by saying we've got to have a more relentless daily focus. You see, prosperity drains urgency. When we're doing well, some of that urgency and intensity can go away. And so complacency can start to hold it, you know, to take a hold within us. And we can start going through the motions or doing things, but not doing them with excellence. You know, I'm a big believer in doing it better each time and learning from what you're doing and not just doing it, not just following a process, not just making calls, making presentations, but finding ways to get better time and time again. And, and when we're calmly content with our results, with our income, with how we're doing, we're less likely to do that. And we have to understand as human beings, we all slide. Uh, but when we slide, we don't slide forward. The natural tendency is to slide backwards. So being aware of this, again, I've said this so many times in the past, our number one vulnerability is the one we're not aware of. So being aware of that natural tendency, and none of us are exceptions, to slide back, to let that pat on the back become a massage, to let that you know victory lap become a marathon, right? to be aware of that tendency and to get refocused on making each day a masterpiece, that relentless focus on those daily activities, doing them with consistency and doing them with excellence, and then doing them again tomorrow and again the next day without excuse, regardless of the cost. That's what it takes to be the game changer in anything, and in your business is no different. So let's just, let me plant some seeds for you and get you to look at some things here. First of all, if you're going to really get that relentless focus on the right activities, you have to identify what they are. So you need to identify out of the 40 things I may need to do every day, what are the handful that are non-negotiable, must be done with excellence, uh, without without excuse, and again, regardless of the cost. Now, once you understand what they are, you got to make sure they get done daily. Uh, and when I talk about daily, I'm talking about being unconditional. You know, if you've heard me before, you've listened to my podcasts, or you've read the book Unstoppable, you know I talk about four different types of performers, undertakers, caretakers, playmakers, game changers. And the one thing I say about the game changer is that they are what I call the unconditional performer. They're focusing on doing the right things every day unconditionally. doesn't matter if they didn't have a good night's sleep the night before. doesn't matter if they're not feeling 100%. Let's face it, most days a good percentage of us aren't feeling 100%. That's not a permission slip to slack. doesn't matter if they got problems going on at home. They mentally check in to the business at hand. And so we have to be unconditionally bringing the effort, energy, enthusiasm, excellence, passion, attitude, focus, and integrity executing those handful of things every day. I wish I could make it more complicated sometimes, I guess, so people would have a, an excuse for not doing it. But it's doing those handful of things over again every day with excellence and consistency that really gets us to that next level. So we have to understand the importance of that ferocious daily focus on the right activities. And then we have to look at our daily routine. You know, sometimes we, we understand what we should be doing, but we're not getting it done because we have a sloppy daily routine. We have a poorly structured or unstructured daily routine. We need structure. Listen, human beings develop to their potential in structured environments. It doesn't matter if you're a great musician, great athlete, great in sales. It doesn't matter. You don't, you're not going to get to that next level by winging it, by shooting from the hip, by operating out of instinct, zigging and zagging and making it up as you go along. You've got to have structure. So in order to maximize the day, we need to have a highly structured day to where those activities are being executed, right? We're scheduling them in. They're getting done regardless. Now, what those activities are are up to you. Creating the structure is up to you. See, all this is on, uh, is on you. So it's nobody's, nobody's fault if it's not getting done. It's something within you. And that's, this is why you need to want it bad enough to structure your day, to identify those activities, and to get them done unconditionally. Understanding that doing it day in, day out, day in, day out, with excellence, with consistency, is going to get you what you want. And then you have to measure how you evaluate a great day. You just can't evaluate a great day by what comes through. You have to evaluate a great day by the seeds planted, because if the right seeds are planted, you're going to have more days where the right things come through. And so it's understanding the sowing and the reaping and the laws of the harvest and putting those right things in every day. You know, lots of times we talk about, I want to maximize my month, my week, my day. I've been talking more and more about maximizing the moments. And you can't max. Listen, the moments become your day. 
turning your downtime into prime time, right? Just really beginning with that, with that with relentless plan every day because the moments become, become your days, your days become your weeks, your weeks become your months, which become your years, which become your career, which become your lifetime, your legacy. What are you doing with the moments? Maximizing those moments. And so you have to, to stay on track, to get back on track wherever you're at. You've got to do a better job, a consistent job, really a relentless job of maximizing those moments with the high impact activities. That's what the game changer does. And they do it regardless. Regardless. And then they run the game film. You know, so we have highly structured days. We, we schedule those high impact activities within those days. We resolve to get them done regardless, regardless, with excellence, with consistency. And then we run a game film. I think the best professionals, I mean, again, you can look at athletics. They just don't go from one game to the next without reviewing what happened. And so it's reviewing that game film in your mind mentally, having the discipline to do this at the end of the day, what, what, what really went well for you. Where were you on? Where did you get in flow and in a rhythm? Because you want to reinforce that and get in that zone more often. Where did you get off track? Where did you slack? Where did you go through the motions? Where, where weren't you mentally checked in? How can you fix that? You don't want to repeat that over and over again. Running the game film through your mind, making the needed adjustments, and then attacking the moments that next day and holding yourself accountable for it. And, and that's the approach it takes to truly become the game changer in anything, and it may be awkward if you're just getting started trying to do it that way, you know, but a lot of you, you've been doing it long enough to where th this is just natural. It's part, of, it's part of who you are, and nobody's having to talk you into do it or bribe you to do it or threaten you to do it. You're doing the right things every day because that's who you are, because you hold yourself to a higher standard than anyone else could possibly hold you to. And if you're not at that point yet, you need to get to that point. You need to have reasons in your own life compelling enough that force you and I say force in a positive way, to do the things you know you should be doing even when you don't want to do them without excuse and, again, regardless of the cost. Why? Because they're the right thing to do. Because you know it's going to take you to where you want to go. Because you have enough self-respect to do what is necessary to take care of your family and to help protect other families. Because that's who you are. That's part of your DNA. And so these are simple things, aren't they? I mean, really structuring your day, identifying those handful of key activities, looking to execute them with more excellence, getting better at them each time, with more consistency, understanding that consistency is really what separates the game changer from the other, from the others, and then running the game film through your mind. Can you see where doing this daily will stop you from becoming calmly content? and smugly self-satisfied. I mean, having goals that stretch you, having a structure that keeps you in motion, you're just having accountability that doesn't allow you to stay off track for long. You're just so much more likely and, and to, to not slide back and not to become calmly content and smugly self-satisfied if you will discipline yourself mentally to do this every day. Let me just, you know, I just sum it up with this. It's, it, and I think this is encouraging, what I'm going to say, and I think it takes a lot of the pressure off. But getting to the next level for you personally, for you organizationally, it doesn't take anything extraordinary. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, okay, if you, if you watch football, it's not the Hail Mary long bomb that's going to get you to the next level. Those don't connect that often. They're fun to watch, but, but the percentage is not very good. You know what gets you there? It's not a, nothing extraordinary. It's the ordinary things done extraordinarily well, done day in and day out with excellence, regardless of excuse. No flea flickers, no, no Hail Marys. It's three yards and a cloud of dust, four yards and a cloud of dust, three yards and another cloud of dust. Move the chains, baby. I'm coming through. And that's the type of mindset that if we apply to anything, especially to what you do, is going to get you to the top, make you your best so you can be the best. And so just planting some seeds with you. I'm going to be talking more about this at our time together, going in uh, to greater depth on a, on, a, on a larger platform, and I'll have more time to spend on it. But I just wanted to visit with you, just wanted to check in, let you know I'm thinking about you, I'm happy for your success, but I'm also cautioning you about the dangers of success. Some folks can't survive it, right? When you're winning, when you're winning, run up the score. Don't sit on the ball, and I'll see you in Vegas real soon. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. We, uh, it's funny because I remember listening to him talk about being a game changer. What's great about this business, I was talking to somebody that, as soon as I heard him say that, read his book, and I said, you know the best part about our entire business? is that anybody here can be a game changer. Seriously, like if you go, hey, let's go play, uh, I don't care, pick a sport. 
soccer. I want to be a game changer. I'm like, I'm not really good at soccer. I'm not just not good at it. So the idea that I'm going to be a game changer in the game of soccer is not, it's not realistic. But in our business, the stuff that Dave talked about, and it is a little stuff. I mean, we read these books and when we hear these people talk and, and they're amazing men and women, but for the most part, I got to tell you, there's nothing that they say that we can't go ahead and do and control. And, uh, so I, I love his focus, love his thought process. We're going to do some Q and A with Dave too, for half of his time with us. So if you do have questions leading up to convention, make sure you get him to whoever you work with, they'll get him to us. And, and we're going to go through and pick, you know, 10, 15 of them to ask him. He's been around for a long time. He's built businesses. He's been in sales. He knows what works, what doesn't work. He knows how people can become frustrated and he knows how to overcome that. And he knows what's worked for a lot of people and then what hasn't worked for a lot. So please stand with us. Oh, I got to give my, Mike Sizer, this is for you. He created this Rogue Agent shirt. And then he said, when I, I'm doing marketing videos today and, and wore this, he said, that's, he, it's perfect. Right, Mark? Right, Mike? Yeah. It's a perfect, just you're, you're perfect. You designed it. You're the Rogue it. Agent today. I'm the Rogue Agent today, so I'm very excited. Um, our next guest is a game changer. Um, he's been a game changer the first day he started working with us. Um, he's somebody that just decides that in a sales plan, I think he'd be the first one to tell you. He never walked in the door and said, I meet with 20 people, I close 20. He's never said that. He, He's somebody who always outworked anything that was going to happen in this business. And what I've heard him say over and over again is I can outsell any problem I'm in. I don't, I don't have a problem in life insurance sales here at Family and First Life. I can outsell that. So very excited to bring my buddy on, Mr. Mark Mead. He is a game changer. Here you go, Mark. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate everything that everybody's doing there at the corporate office. This next level call is about how to get new agents moving, how to get any agent moving because sometimes you're not always new. Um, and what I figured out <clears throat> in working with people over time is we used to make it about a lot of different things. And the more the training has evolved, when I say evolved, there's so many people. We were funny, we were in Las Vegas uh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and Paul McLean opened up the training and he says, there's probably 50 people, 70 people in here that can train. And that means that we'd have training for four or five days. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, that was just Vegas, 400 people. This company is a lot bigger than what was in Vegas. There's a lot of people that can train. So now, train at an elite level on sales. So now that's become really well documented from a standpoint of, if you really want the information, you're going to get the information. So we've morphed our approach to training so that we can be more effective. Because I, what I really want to hit on, if I'm working with a new agent or if I'm working with an agent, um, is how to get them past their hurdles. The hurdles is really the deal. It's not this, you know, elusive um, how much I can talk, how often I can talk how much I can wear them out from a train, none of that ever matters. The only thing that matters is everything that I'm gonna go over right now. So when I'm talking to an agent, I talk to them about these five things. And I'm gonna highlight these three things, okay, starting off, and then these two things are a big part of what we do, but a real schedule. Like, if you're full time, I need to know what a real schedule is. I got, you know, some people, they, they, they think that having the weekends off is good. If you're full-time, I think that's bad. Um, do I think that you should work both weekend days? Not necessarily. I think if you're trying to get ahead, that's great. But I think that you can work one of the weekend days and do very well. So for me, that would be Saturday, okay? And then, well, Friday, Saturday, and then, we dial Monday for Tuesday, Wednesday. Why is that important? Because it's very difficult to track progress or track day in and day out or track week in and week out, month in and month out without a real schedule. Meaning if every time you come to me, there's a new hurdle, you know, you have to pick the kids up from this, you have to drop them off at this, you have to be at soccer practice, we don't have a schedule. And what we're dealing with is fabrication. I'll never work with fabrication. I'm not going to work with falsehoods, meaning we're, we don't have a lot to talk about. I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just not going to let you waste my time. 
So I want to work with people that are looking to work with themselves first. Okay? So a real schedule. We'll dig into some of this a little closer. A real lead plan. So a real lead plan consists of 50 to 60 brand new leads a week. For my brand new agent, settle down. We'll get you where you need to be. But the moment you start getting in sales and issue pay results and, and, and deposits, we need to start developing ourselves into a place where we can get 50 to 60 multiplicity of leads a week. Okay, I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Okay, the third thing is you need to protect your dial time. So, very much like the real schedule, I love the guy or girl who has to go to the dry cleaners on Monday and Thursday. Those are, those are the dial days. I love the guy or girl who needs to get their transmission fixed on Monday and Thursday. Obviously, I'm being facetious. But the reality is, is what, what you need to focus on is Monday and Thursday, the only two days that really count, because those are the days that the money is made, meaning all the money's made on the phones, ladies and gents. I don't think anyone's confused, but if you're negotiating this day, your dial day, your dial time, you're in a mass heap of trouble and it's never going to work out. And you know, this idea that you're going to run on a Tuesday, three appointments, you're going to, or on a Monday, you're going to set up appointments on your dial day. You literally domino effect negatively your week when you do that. When you run appointments on the day you are supposed to dial, you're scrambling the rest of the week to try to catch up. So those days are very sacred. My recommendation is you start at 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m. the latest, whatever, whatever time zone you're in, and protect your dial time. We'll get into exactly how all that works, but my opinion is you should be booking uh, one appointment every 15 minutes. That's four appointments an hour. That means if you were going to book eight appointments for Tuesday and Wednesday, that's four hours worth of work. So if we did that twice, that's eight hours worth of work. Eight hours is worth a lot of money in this business. Let's treat it like it's worth that. Now, we've all had the person that runs off 10, 10 appointments in an hour. Awesome. We've all had the person who's done with their 16 appointments in an hour and a half. Great. If that's you and you have that successful dial session, good for you. The problem is, is when you make that your regularity, where you think that now I only need an hour and a half to book my 16 appointments. Good luck with that. The only difference, it's not about the skill. As my man Dominique says, it's about getting people to pick up the phone. I don't know when they're going to, I can't control that. So I have to allot enough time. And allotting enough time doesn't mean I'm out of the office at three. No matter what. You gotta reverse engineer that if you wanna be successful. It's, I'm gonna dial till I'm done, no matter what. And whatever time you're done, you're done. Now, that could be a session, it could be a day. Your call, not mine. It depends on what time you start, how diligent you are, and how you protect your dial time and block out distractions. The fourth thing I want to get into is reinvesting. This is a big deal. We're going to get into this in depth. A big deal is reinvesting the money that you make back into your business for leads. A lot of people get the deposits and they want to go out and start paying every bill that ever existed. Well, here's the deal. The problem, the situation, the bill, that you that you got going on was already going on. And if you didn't get this money in your pocket, it'd still be going on. So treat it like it's going on. And then, uh, over time, we can throw some stuff at it, but right now, we gotta get you some oxygen. And the leads are oxygen. 
If you treat them any differently, your success will be limited. The day you say, I'm going to buy 50, 60 leads a week is the day your financial troubles are over. Provided that you're running a real schedule and you protect your dollar time. Okay. Number five, this is hiring your warm market. I think it's important. A lot of people need an opportunity. A lot of people are looking to make an extra thousand, two thousand bucks a week part time on the side of what they're currently doing. You should be asking people to do if they're interested. Because whether you're the greatest salesman or the best person at FFL or not, or you just started, people need an opportunity. Fair enough. Like people are out there, they need an opportunity. And you're at home, you're waiting to get great at this to provide an opportunity. Well, that's where I go to the second side of this. And teaching agents to sell also becomes a little bit more easy because of the way we're structured at Family First, okay? Everybody that you work with is some form of support. Okay? Now, what does that look like? Support's going to be in the form of mentorship, like you're working with somebody. It's a manager. They hired you. Or their manager. Doesn't matter. You're going to have mentorship. That's the greatest part about this business to me, this company to me, is that you actually get to not step in the places that blew that guy's toe off because he's going to tell you not to step there. So it positions you to ask a lot of questions and circumvent the landmines. Staff support. At the highest VP level or board member level or senior VP level or EVP level, you're going to have somebody who's got staff in their office who's going to be able to help you out with things that you need quicker answers to. So that's also phenomenal. Number three under support is the carrier support. So if you're looking for product information, or you need illustrations run, or you need um, quotes run, that you like maybe an IUL or something like that, you can call the carrier. Matter of fact, if you call your mentor to do that, you're wasting their time. I say it with a smile, but you are wasting their time. That's why the carriers have sales support lines, and they're loaded with this thing, from Monday through Friday, you know, 8 to 6 or whatever the deal is. So you have the ability, with all the carriers we have, they all have support. So now you can, you can, you can circumvent a step and save time. Remember, you're independent. You're an independent contractor. This is how we teach people to sell, okay? The th the, this, this part over here is the system. The system is our greatest asset. It's the greatest thing we have. Why? The training here at FFL is second to none. You know, you basically have the ability to plug into trainings, to plug into calls. Most, I mean, there's probably five to six calls a week per team that you can plug into, uh, whether it's an agency call or the next level call, or the Monday morning wake up call, or the or the podcast and. The beauty of it is, is what I would do is I would put this into your schedule on your phone five minutes prior with the phone number and the access code already loaded up so that you get a ping to your phone when it's time to get on these calls. This way you don't miss any. The good news is if you miss any calls, there's a podcast. You can use the podcast to help you and to use, to utilize everything that you missed all week from the corporate office, which is unbelievable. So the training. Now, if you're an agent and you're saying, well, I need to figure out how to do return premium, what I'm going to say to you is go on the podcast, look up Frank Euphemia. He's done probably seven of those. He's the best return of premium cashback option sales trainer in the company. Why would I spend 40 minutes trying to explain the cashback? I understand the cashback, but Frankie's the best at it. So why would I spend 40 minutes going over it? Listen to the call that Frankie did. Call me if you have any questions. Systematized. Okay? I know I said that wrong, but it is what it is. Um, so the training. 
Now, final expense train. Podcast. Next level call. I'm not confused that every single thing, building an organization, mindset, everything that is that is or was is covered on the podcast. Meaning you're going to get exactly what you're looking for through the training. The good news is everybody is an elite, elite trainer. I mean, you listen to some of these next level calls. These people are phenomenal. The, their approach, and here's what you do. Find someone with the approach that you like and mirror it. You're going to have to make it your own anyway, but mirror it. Facebook pages. It's part of the system. Every company has a Facebook page, whether it's um, Southeast, FFL Southeast, or FFL Maryland, or FFL uh, USA, and, and uh, uh, West Coast, or Golden State. There's a, there's a Facebook page for you to log on to for that organization. There's other pages that you can log on with other organizations, like Tri-State has a page you can log on to, and you can see the success and the opportunities of other agents in those um, in those pages. So you're going to have the results of some of those Facebook pages with people talking about their success, talking about their training, talking about how they overcame the sale. Get into those groups. That's a massive strength for us. And then to give back. It's cultural. It's cultural that people give back. So most of the people um, that work here are very excited to share the information that they know, share the information that they've learned throughout the years, to share the information that they're just getting, and they want to give back. That's a system that you just can't get anywhere else. I apologize, but you just can't. And the fact that these men and women are so generous to give their time, to give their knowledge, with nothing, with not just... What they get in return is gratitude. So that's awesome. And then the last thing I want to go over for this structure kind of thing is structure. So we have the three S's, support, system, structure. Why is FFL the best place on the planet? Because of this. Now, I could, I could be working somewhere else, right? And I can say, I'm going to dial Monday for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for Friday, Saturday. Here's the problem. If I know the playbook at Alabama, and I know what the coach sounds like in an interview, and I know what the players say about the program, but I don't play there, it don't matter. So I could care less about any other structure. This structure works because the people that do it actually walk it out every day. So you're literally inside of a system, a program with real structure. Why the players here make multiple six figures, no issue. Why we break more, why we have Hall of Famers coming out of our eardrums is because the air you breathe here is like the air the people out of Alabama breathe when they go play. You could read the press clippings, you could do whatever you want. You're not running this structure if you don't breathe the air. Don't tell me that. FFL's got the magic. Monday, it sounds so simple until you have to get out of the bed and do it. But when you, when you walk into an atmosphere of greatness, your level starts to tick up of who you are and what you want to be. So now, you never would have done this, but you start to become this. So this dial day, Monday, we dial till we're done. That's the culture. That's the system. This idea that you're going to dial till you're tired or dial till you, that's not what elite people do. The people at the top of the leaderboard don't do that. They dial till they're done and they start early. Then they run eight appointments on Tuesday and eight appointments on Wednesday. Sixteen. And then they come back, they do the same thing again on Thursday. This sounds so simple, but without the right kind of air, you ain't getting that done. So continue. That, and here's what I tell people. Look, you're looking for 25 to 30 appointments a week. If you got to get your transmission done or you got to go to the chiropractor, make Friday the day. Book five for Friday. Book eight for Saturday. That's 29 appointments for the week. You and I 
will never have a conversation about the money you don't have. We'll never have that conversation. But you understand, this is how we get new agents moving. This is what we talk to agents about at nauseum. I don't talk. Listen, this, your no sales, listen to the podcast. Because whatever you didn't sell and why, it's on a podcast. Matt Smith already talked about it, dude. I'm not going to, like for me to be labor, what Matt Smith already talked about is ludicrous. That would mean like, you want me to hold your hand through this whole thing. No, I'm here to support. We're here to support. We're not here to, we're not here to baby you. You're independent. We want to help you be as big as you want to be doing this. So what I'm going to get into real quick is this real lead plan. I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of what I think is sick, what can actually work. So we've got multiple different types of leads. I'm going to cover a few really fast. We have this new retro mortgage lead, which is old data, one to five year old data. It's $430 per thousand pieces. Now let me explain this to you. Imagine your client 19 months after they closed, no longer receiving mortgage protection letters, and now gets a letter that says, hey honey, remember that thing that came when we closed? We were, you think we should, yeah, let's fill this out. 19 months later, the, 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 the reality of that is that's a Glen Gary lead. Meaning, they're not gonna complain. That's a, I will tell you, as many leads as you get, you should close. Because any, anybody's filling out something 19 months later, usually there's an event that took place or they're thinking about it for real. So that's gold. The FEX BPL through corporate, through mail problem. These are 29 bucks a pop. They made some changes to the lead. It looks phenomenal. It's a final expense lead. I would incorporate that into your game. The Facebook leads are in English and Spanish, and those are $15 a pop, okay? So now, you want to talk about getting 50 to 60 leads a week, we can do that, but you've got to do that in a multitude. There's many other leads. I'm just giving you a lead plan to start with. You can get 30 of these a week, 40 of these a week, that's 600 bucks, 40 Facebook leads. You can get 10 BPLs a week, final expense, and let's say you drop one of these a week. Now we're at 890 plus 430, let's just call it an even 1300 for time's sake. You're $1,300 in for the week, but you're getting 10, 10, 40, and now what you've got is you've got a 10 time multiple. What you invest is what you get back excuse me, what you submit. So now we're talking about a $13,000 week off the $1,300 you invested. Why would you not reinvest? Of course you'd reinvest. Because this $13,000, if let's just say $10,000 of it gets issued, you made $7,500 in your bank account on a $1,300 investment. We're not even, to, like Wall Street returns you would lose your mind on a five, six hundred percent return. Please work with me here. Now for my brand new agent, I'm going to close with this. Let's just say you were starting with the, I'm going to take this off real quick. Let's just say you were starting with the inventory lease, CRM lease. $8, 30 days, $5. 60 days, $3, 90 days, okay? Let's say you buy 100 of these $5 leads. They cost you 500 bucks. 100. What we're trying to accomplish here, let me get this out of your way, is you're going 100 opportunities, okay? You're going to write $5,000 in business. Let's just say 4,000 of that business gets issued, they're going to advance you, let's just say 2,700 bucks. 
This is the rub. This is the reinvest. When people get this $2,700, it is not time to fix the tires on the car. It's not time to pay off charge-offs. It's not time to pay back credit cards. None of that's relevant because without the oxygen of the, of the new leads, of more leads coming in, you're kaput. And then we have this ongoing, nauseating conversation of why you're not getting going. It's because you never reinvested. So what if we took 1400 out of this and did one of two things. If we dip back in the CRM leads, maybe we got 50 this time, we bought 40 FEX leads, Facebook leads. So 40 plus 50, um, let's say these are $5 leads, 250 plus 600 is now 850. You still have money left over in your lead account you still have money left over, and you're basically now you now you got 850 invested. Now you're going to write 8,500 dollars, and you're going to reinvest, and it's a wash, rinse, repeat cycle of reinvesting and running a real schedule with real leads and protecting your dial time over and over and over, plugging into the system and winning real big with FFL. Appreciate your time, guys. Thank you. Mark, thank you, man. I, I appreciate it. You know, one of the things that uh, I, I really have to say is because I think it's so pointed that Mark talked about this. I think, you know, when I left my job and the first time I got a, I got a paycheck, you know, like, like selling life insurance, and I just got rolling. The, the, the thing that hit my mind was not, oh my God, let me fix everything that's been going wrong financially in my life for five years. It was, I want to make this check go from $400 a week to $800 a week to $8,000 a week. Seriously, that was like how my mind started to work. So really appreciate that, Mark. And it's simple, right? I mean, get great at getting leads, get great at getting on the phone, and get great at getting in the home. I think that that you listen to what Mark talked about with all the different resources that we have and, and you don't have to be all things to all people. That's, that's the beauty of it. There's so many different ways to help people get started. But at the end of the day, when you look at training and you look at the way people convey their message and all of us are different, by the way, you are you, I'm me, we can't be you. You're great, be who you are, you know? But at the end of the day, when you're talking to people, whether you're training them to sell life insurance, whether you're talking to them about protecting their family, whether you're talking to them about how awesome a business opportunity this is and trying to hire them, at the end of the day, they can't have to work so hard to find out if you're really passionate about it. Passion comes in many different, um, you know, many different ways. I mean, you, you, Mark, you, you're, you don't doubt Mark's passion. Now, why is Mark so passionate? Mark wants everybody, because I know him very well, everybody that gets licensed to have as much success as humanly possible. And then when they start to hit a wall or a lid, a lot of times it's self-imposed, he wants them to push through it because they can. See, a lot of us are really, when we get, we become an independent contractor, or if we've been one for a while, if we've never had a level of success, we start to talk ourselves into the fact that we can't. And you know, it's funny, I talk to people all the time, well, I don't do that. I'm like, well, You've never had that success. The mind's a powerful thing. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Where do you think, what do you think you're feeding yourself? Because our business doesn't, doesn't require, I say this all the time, any innate ability. You just have to have a work ethic and genuinely care about other people, right? That's activity and attitude, just said a very different way. So anybody can go do this. So I, I promise you, please take what Mark talked about, um, what we do have access to, you got to get leads, you got to fuel your business. It will, you can't move without them. And then we teach you to get really good at working with your clients over and over again and handling your annual reviews and having clients for life where you don't, where your lead strategy will continue to change. But as you get going, it's a matter of if you want something different, you got to do something different. You want something uncomfortable, go do something uncomfortable. I'm going to turn it over to my buddy Sean Ruggiero. He's going to interview Zach T. It's all your guys. Thanks business on the East Coast. Uh, younger gentleman, graduated from the University of Colorado and um, has found a lot of success with Family First Life. Zach has issued paid just over $370,000 year to date. Not a bad income uh, for uh, coming out of uh, college just a couple years ago. And today Zach's going to be talking about a couple things, but specifically 
the T65 lead. So the T65 lead is a new lead. It's built on the BPL chassis. That's the buy per lead chassis. The T65 lead is targeting people who are turning 65 in five months. Why is this important? Well, if they are turning 65, many of them are going to be now eligible for Medicare supplements or Medicare. And they're going to purchase, the vast, vast, vast majority are going to purchase some form of Medicare supplement or Medicare Advantage. We need to simplify this. We write Medicare supplements. There's a few of you out there that write Medicare Advantage and we can do that. But our strength right now is Americo, Mutual of Omaha, and even Transamerica for our Medicare supplement. Many, many, many of you, if you want to sell a predictable, budgeted amount for a med supplement to fill the gaps of their Medicare plan, you need to sell med sup. If you're not doing it, you are literally leaving dollars on the table. Literally. There can't be an easier sell. You're going to be selling Plan G almost all the time, and you're going to be selling med sup. And the T65 is a great, what I call, Trojan horse lead. Because it gets you in the home when no one else is there. See, they can't even buy Med Advantage till three months. They can buy Med Sub six months. So you're coming in at five months as a reputable Medicare supplement advisor. All you need is a health license, and you're going to help them purchase a Plan G with America, maybe Mutual of Omaha. It's that simple. But in that process, you're going to be doing a financial inventory, and you're going to be uncovering tons of other business. Uh, Zach went out in the field and piloted our T65 leads and he had great success. So I'm going to turn over to Zach here in just a minute and let him tell you how he used the T65 not only to write some Medicare supplement, but actually a ton of HMS, final expense, and even find annuity money. So before I turn it over, I want to tell you one thing. If you have not started writing your first med sub, you need to. It's an absolute must. You're holding yourself back on easy money that pays lifetime uh, renewals. Go to FFL space med space sub space training in Facebook and ask to join the group. Fantastic training videos. We have Skylar Smith, one of our experts training. We have the Medicare supplement uh, trifold. We have tons of resources on how to, how to uh, train on med sub and sell your first plan G for FFL with America or with Mutual of Omaha. And you're going to do it by signing up for the T65 lead, which one thing I'll add to that, the T65 lead is a perfect complimentary lead. There's no one else coming in the house, so you don't have that competition that you do with uh, MedSub. You don't have the confusion like you might have with final expense. They know why you're coming. It's an easy lead to book. It's through um, uh, MailPro, one of our lead providers, and it gives you just the right amount of supplemental leads. You know, that type of 10 to 20 leads a month, uh, maybe even less than that. But the reason why that's important is because it's not going to overwhelm you. It's not going to be something where all of a sudden you get 600 of these leads and you can't keep up on it. This is a perfect supplement. And if you have not locked out your T65 lead for MedSup, uh, then you need to do so by contacting Sasha at the corporate office. So I'm going to turn it over to Zach. Take it away from here. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Zach Twardowski. Um, it's an absolute honor to be on the Next Level call. Uh, I really appreciate you know, the opportunity to go to give back. Um, you know, the, these calls are really how I learned um, how to do this whole thing. And I keep learning something new every time I get on a call. Um, so I, I really can't stress the importance. And then, you know, in turn, I can't stress how much of an honor it is to even be considered and allowed to train on one of these conference calls. Um, but yeah, again, my name is Zach Twardowski, and I'll be training on um, to Medicare supplement leads. So I just had the opportunity of working some Medicare supplement leads. Um, and I just kind of wanted to go through and break down, you know, the amount of leads I got, how many I set, how many I sat with, how much I wrote, what I wrote, and then, um, you know, sort of the, the process of getting in the home, um, you know, and what that looked like as far as getting in the home, you know, transitioning from, you know, Medicare to, you know, life insurance and then, you know, to trying to find annuity money and, you know, sort of how to make that process work, um, which is something I'm still working on, but. Uh, I think, you know, with Sean uh, Ruggiero's help, I was able to, you know, sort of figure out a good way to at least get in the home and, and help transition from Medicare to the life insurance uh, without it being completely awkward. Um, so first and foremost, I guess this is what this is what the actual lead looks like. It's very similar to people that run mortgage protection. It's very similar to like the male pro mortgage protection lead. Um, 
you know, it just says on the very top, Medicare open enrollment qualification card. Um, it's just something when people, you know, when they're about to turn 65, they get these leads, right? Um, so I had gotten 42 leads. From the 42 leads, I set um, 28 appointments. Um, 28 appointments, I sat with 18 people. Um, and from the 18 people, I wrote eight life policies, um, five of which were Eagle Premier, two Living Promise, and one HMS 125. And then I also wrote, um, wrote five Medicare supplement plans. And then just so you know, for the eight life policies totaled up to be $11,157. Um, and then I also, I did not convert any annuities, which is something I'm still working on myself and um, something I definitely am not even you know, close to you know, figuring out yet, but I'm still working on it. But I did find just shy of $600,000 of um, annuity money there. So it definitely is there, and someone other than myself probably would have closed a few of those. But like I said, we're all we're all still learning. Um, so I guess first, um, I've been with FFL about a year and a half, a little bit less. Uh, started in August of last year, and then um, year to date this year, um, I issued around three hundred seventy thousand um, dollars of life volume, and have not issued any annuities to this point. Um, but yeah, so let me kind of go, you know, start with, you know, the most important part is the, the, the phone, uh, how we actually get in the home of people. So I kept it, you know, very simple. And something I really liked about these leads was the fact that when you called them, you know, it wasn't, it, it, if you called them a couple weeks later, people weren't always like, oh, we already took care of this. Like we're good, you know? So it seemed like a little bit less competitive, which is something I really liked. But, you know, basically when I would call, I would just be, um, let's just pretend this lady's name is Mary, right? So I'd be like, ring, ring. Hey, Mary. Yep. Hey, Mary, this is Zach. Uh, I'm just giving you a call real quick about the postcard you had mailed in for the Medicare open enrollment qualification request. Um, I'm just the Medicare specialist assigned to, you know, your zip code, which is 29730. Uh, my job is simply just to go over, you know, what you may be eligible for. And my office has me out your direction um, this week. You know, are you working still or are you retired, Miss Mary? Oh, I'm retired. Okay, great. So they got me seeing about 10 other families out that way tomorrow. I do have an 11 o'clock or a 315 available. Do you know what will work best for you for about 15 or 20 minutes? Uh, let's, let's say 315. Okay, Mary, perfect. And then uh, you hadn't written, you know, anyone else on here. You just had only written your name on here. Are you married or are you uh, single? You know, and then if they're married, obviously, I'm making sure that the husband can also be there at the 315 time. Um, and if they're single, you know, I'm like, okay, great. So you definitely will be there at 315. Um, go ahead and write down my name and number in your calendar. And, um, and if I put in your address, the 123 Main Street into my GPS, will it get me to your house? Okay. Um, just to verify, you know, that, um, you know, that I can, I can get there and I won't get lost on my way there. Um, and then once I actually, you know, got in the house, basically, you know, what I did is like, okay, so just so... Mary, you know, um, what I do is I do the Medicare, um, Medicare supplement, but in addition to that, I also do normal life insurance. I do mortgage protection. I do final expense, um, insurance. And I also, um, I also do do some retirement planning for folks. So I'm going to go through and ask you a few different questions, you know, see where I may be able to help out. Um, in addition to the Medicare. Okay. And then I would just run through the financial inventory like normal, you know, I would get their age, um, in this situation, she's retired, so figure out the monthly income. Um, I was still asked, you know, do you guys have a house? Um, or, or do you own this house? Or are you renting? Do you have a mortgage? You know, and if they're renting or had a mortgage, um, I'd be like, okay, cool. Do you all have anything, do you have anything in place for, you know, your kids if something happens to you? Or if they're married um, and they're renting? Okay, got it. Do you have any, you know, plans for how you're going to, you know, protect being able to stay here if something happens to either spouse? And if they don't have anything in place, you know, as far as the mortgage protection goes, I just, uh, you know, write on the side of the paper, just, okay, I'm going to put a little star here, guys. And then at the end, once we get done with everything, we're going to come back here and I can kind of, kind of go over some options for this with you. Okay. And they're usually, oh, okay, that'd, that'd be nice. And then, um, after that, I also ask, okay, do you guys have any, you know, do you have any other insurance, you know, any funeral insurance, um, anything to pay for final expenses or leave a legacy? And if they say yes, you know, I'm like, okay, cool. Why don't you do this for me? Just go ahead and grab those policies. Um, and I'm seeing, you know, if it's something I can, if they have a graded policy and I can put them in something better, or if I have, um, you know, if they have something they just recently took out that, 
is you know really expensive or you know anything that's wrong with their policies like if they have a term or anything like that then i will um you know show them how we can put them into a better position um and then if they don't have anything at all i'm gonna ask them like have you guys thought about getting you know this type of insurance before and i just briefly touch on it and then you know so they're like yeah we have we just haven't gotten around to it yet I'm like okay cool well that's like most families you know what i can come back here later i can come back later after we get done with this and we can talk about that um, and then after, you know, after I get done talking to them about those things, I run through their health, um, have them grab me any prescriptions, you know, any medications they take, any big surgeries that they've ever had. And I have them get me out their, um, their Medicare card. And a lot of folks I sat with knew like, yeah, we just want, <clears throat> we just want a Medicare supplement plan that'll cover X, Y, and Z. And Andrew had sent out something in an email a long time ago that broke down, like simplified, dummied up the Medicare plans. So that's all I use. I'm like, okay, so you guys just want this, so this is the right plan for you guys. Um, and if I wasn't sure, then I would just submit it to ask a specialist, or I would call um, somebody, like Christina from our office is good at Medicare. So I would call her up and be like, hey, this is what they need, am I going down the right path? And she'd be like, yeah, that's right, go ahead with that. And then when I had people that wanted uh, Medicare Advantage, all I did was submit it to ask a specialist, set up a time to come back out, and I'm still working back through some of those, going back out to see those folks. Um, yeah, and the ones I wrote in the home, like I said, I just asked people, you know, do you know which things you need covered? And they pretty much just told me what they needed covered. I'm like, okay, cool. We're going to select this plan for you. Um, you know, I'm going to run it through, look at a couple different companies, figure out which one's cheapest. I'd run it, show them the number. Hey, does this work for your guys' budget? And um, they're like, yeah, it is. And it's a little bit different. It's not like, it's different than selling life insurance because it's something for themselves. So, you know, it's a lot easier to... Uh, I guess close it. You're like, okay, this is a hundred hundred dollars a month. Is that is that okay? They're like, well, yeah, I have to have it. So, um, yeah, we'll do it. Um, so I think out of that part there wasn't very much pushback or anything like that. Um, so then once I wrapped that part up, whether or not I helped them out with Medicare or or not, like with some people, they were like, you know what, we're already good. We were just filling the form out because we saw it. We want to see if we could save some money. And if we weren't able to save the money, I'd be like, no problem. Um, you know. And then I asked them, you know, do you guys have anything else uh, for retirement funds, like stocks, bonds, uh, annuities, IRAs, anything like that? And if they did, I would have them grab me a statement for that. And again, you know, because I'm not by any stretch of the imagination graded at annuities, I would submit that to ask a specialist as well. Um, yeah, but then so at the very end, I'd be like, OK, cool. So we we talked about earlier, you know, that you didn't really have anything in place for the mortgage. A lot of people, you know, who fill these forms out, you know, are kind of interested in looking at something like that, too. I mean, I have a couple more minutes to my next appointment. Is that something you guys want me to go through with you? And I kind of put the ball in their car, and I bet 75% of the people were like, yeah, why don't we go through that while you're here? Um, so I'd run through just like a normal mortgage protection appointment with them. And then, you know, same thing I with the final expense. I'd be like, hey, guys, um, you know, most people who are, you know, turning 65 who don't have any coverage are kind of, you know, something's kind of on the back of your mind. I mean, is that something you want me to go through with you while I'm here? Um, and again, most people were like, yeah, you know, you're here. You might as well. And um, so then I would have an opportunity to go through that with them. And um, and it was very um, casual, put the ball in their court. And a lot of people were like, yeah, you know what? You're already here. We don't need to sit with somebody else. I mean, you know, we, we've put this off long enough. You know, we might as well go ahead and do it. Um, and then I'm not sure if I broke this down earlier, but of the eight life policies that I had written, um, so five vehicle premieres, three of those were mortgage ones to, you know, buy some time for folks to, Give them a little critical um, time period protection. Uh, one of the living promises was a mortgage protection, and the HMS 125 was a mortgage protection. So then the other um, the other three policies were all just final expense ones. And you know that's probably a little bit due to the fact that I run a lot of mortgage protections, so my mind is kind of focused on that. But um, yeah, a lot of these people, even if they had everything set up with the Medicare, um, you know, had gaps in other areas, and it was really cool to be able to help them out there and. You know, not be overly aggressive, but just be like, hey, you know, I'm already here. I do this as well. Um, I can take, you know, two minutes before my next appointment to look at it for you and see if there's anything that would even make sense for your guys' situation or that you could qualify for. Um, but yeah, I hope that, that helps. Um, I hope that encourages some people, you know, like myself to branch out and not just use direct mail mortgage protection, but to use, you know, Facebook and, uh, you know, Medicare supplement leads. Um, appreciate you know, everyone's time and I hope everyone has a great weekend.